Well, what began in November culminates today. One last show with one last game being played tonight in the Final Four in Glendale, Arizona. It is UConn going for the repeat against arguably the other biggest story in college basketball throughout the year, Purdue. Looking for redemption a la Virginia in 2019 after having lost to a 16 seed. They won the whole thing. Purdue now in position to try to do that same thing. And we're here to talk all about it and handicap it one more time on BetUS TV. Hello, I am the somewhat capable host, TJ Reeves. Look at this. We pull out the quad box here on the final program. Corby Craig, good to be with you. Kyle Hunter, good to be with you. Big man on campus, Jeff Nadu, good to have you back one more time. Boys, it's here. Connecticut, Purdue. Corby, thoughts off the weekend, and we get ready for the national title game coming up tonight. Yeah, couldn't have been more excited how the weekend played out. Uh, Kyle and I both talked about that. ED assists. I think that's the biggest plus money conversation we've had uh, on this show in like the last two years. So five to one, Zach ED four assists kind of played out exactly how we talked about it doing. Uh, always fun and hope to have the same kind of success that we had in semifinals today. Yeah, well, the show ended up being five and two on semifinal Saturday. The host even pulled out the live button on a couple of plays. Uh, as well for the weekend, including that Alabama-Connecticut game getting over the first half total. Hello, Kyle Hunter. Happy National Championship Monday for UConn and Purdue. Thoughts off the weekend? Well, I think those games, uh, you know, were about what we expected. The spread's pretty wide. No real tight game from Saturday. But uh, rarely do we get the two best teams in the country to play in the championship game. I think we have it today. Big man on campus. We get UConn. We get Purdue. UConn trying to do what only one other team this century has done, and that's go back-to-back. That's Florida in 06, 07. And other than Duke in 91 and 92, you've only had two teams do this before in the last 50 years of college basketball. So this is rarefied air. Big man, how amped up are you? Thoughts off the weekend as well. And leave it to the used car salesman, John Calipari, to make it all about him uh, as the uh, national title game uh, is here. But it, uh, we're talking more about John C. Okay. Can I, can I give you a little story before we get into the handicap? We're going to show the records. We're going to get to your questions in a little bit. I'm trying to have dinner. We're in the Pacific time zone. We're having dinner. All the, all the college basketball media, et cetera, decompressing. We watch the women's tournament game. Congrats again to Dawn Staley. South Carolina unbeaten season. They win the championship. We're all at dinner, Pacific time. And the phone is going crazy every which direction about the Calipari stuff. So you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, the lull of Sunday into Sunday night, you kind of you kind of talked up um, and written up all the stuff about the Final Four. Now the Calipari thing has become the story in college basketball, unle- at least until the game begins tonight. So let's go around the room just with a real quick thought. Corby. It's a shocker that he leaves for another SEC school. He has no buyout to leave. What a ridiculous contract at Kentucky. Corby, a quick thought about this, because it's the story this morning, again, until the game gets going tonight. Yeah, it's it's a strange situation. When I heard it, I thought it was fake news. It just doesn't make a ton of sense to go to Arkansas in my head. Um, but now the question is, who goes back to to Kentucky, who's going to fill those shoes? And um, obviously, it's just speculation. But uh, I was talking to one of my friends this morning. I would love to see it be uh, Rick Patino. I, do I do? Do I think it's possible? But to uh, an I'm coming home situation, I think would be awesome to watch. Oh, the theater for that. Uh, much the same as Kyle Hunter's buyout on Bet US TV. If he was to go somewhere else, Nate Oates has an $18 million buyout on the new deal he just signed. If he leaves in the first year, it's $18 million. Uh, Kyle, it's very similar to your buyout. A thought on this mayhem that's going on with Calipari. It's not official yet, but it looks like it's going to get announced any time here. He's going to be the Arkansas coach. Yeah, I can confirm there are no similarities there, uh, TJ. <laughs> uh, I was too stunned by that. You know, I thought it was just uh, some weird rumors to start with. And and uh, the fact that it came out the night before, just interesting timing for sure. And now it's going to be who's going to be hired at Kentucky uh, with Oates kind of being the one people are talking about right away. But like you said, there's a lot of money involved. Um, I am looking forward to the game more than yep. more than talking about this, though. Big man, get one more blast off and maybe a thought on who Kentucky gets. Scott Drew's name was said to me a couple yeah. of times out here in Arizona. Big man, any thoughts 
here just real quick, and then we'll get to the game. Well, I think one thing we forget about Arkansas, you know, in addressing like Cor- what Corby said, there are 267 billion reasons uh, to go to Arkansas, and the name begins with the Waltons, who uh, uh-huh. own Walmart. I mean, they're, they're very involved in, in this university. It's a lot of money flowing in that area, and I think a lot of it has to do as well with the NIL stuff. It is, it's going to be simple to get the best players on the planet to come to Arkansas to play basketball. If I'm a Razorback fan, they have some of the best fans. That's one of the best atmospheres in the country. Uh, that's going to be uh, elite level. Will they win? We'll see. But it's not really about winning with Cal Perry a lot of times. It's just can we get the best players. As far as replacement, uh, look, I would look at a, a Tommy Lloyd, something like that. I think he would be very interesting at, 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 at Kentucky. I think it is going to be Danny Hurley, though. I, I think they'll throw Ooh. whatever they can at Danny Hurley. I, don't, they have I a, disagree with that. I don't think he leaves. I mean, Why he's got an he? empire right now at UConn. He's got an easier conference. But, but, but You've Kentucky, been bashing the Big East all year. He's got an easier conference. But Kentucky the is East. the biggest name in college basketball. I mean, it, it's, it ain't uh, bigger than UConn right now, babe. It ain't bigger than UConn. It's not. It's just but simply Kentucky, not. It was, it was five or six years ago, but they have done nothing in March. And UConn but it does a, but, is the But brand. again, the name, the Kentucky name, the, the blue, the big blue nation, I, I think he'll be the first choice for them. And, and they will have a blank check to give him whatever he wants. I'll tell you another person I would consider if it's not him. Uh, Jay Wright, uh, w- why not come back if you're going to? I mean, he's only 62 years old. Um, there's still five, six, seven years left, more than that possibly. Uh, you can win some titles there. You're going to get whatever you want. It's a great place to live. Billy Donovan, maybe, too. Billy Donovan. There's a lot of names, that's for sure. So, again, that that is the story right now, but the game is building. We're live. Why don't we talk about that? First, our records. Our guys with the graphics, Kevin and company, have been working on this. So here's the full-screen graphic off the 5-2 and two Final Four Saturday. The show now pops back up to nine games over 500. Uh, look at uh, Kyle Hunter comfortably above 500. Corby Craig above 500. The big man even making progress uh, as well is going to no, have a I'm play not. or no, two. No, I'm not. Luckily, I'll be put out of my misery in about 20 minutes. All right. Uh, well, you're going to have a play and maybe even a couple of plays on this uh, today. So let's get into it, shall we? Let us discuss it. It is Purdue. It is Connecticut. It is coming up at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. I can tell you this. They had upwards of 35, maybe 40,000 Purdue fans in the stadium for game one Saturday. It is believed, guys, there will be 50,000 or more in black and gold for Purdue. They will have some atmosphere. UConn holding right now as a seven-point favorite. That line opened somewhere around six or six and a half. Got bet up some to seven. It remains seven on the BetUS line as we do the live show this morning. Total 145 and a half. All right, we've got discussion on the sides, on the total, on player props. We've got all kinds of plays that are going to be made. We'll, we'll again go around the room. Corby Craig, start us off. Give me uh, some handicapping and an official play here. Yeah, this is going to be weird because we have one game and a lot of props to talk about. So I'll just hit like the surface level of what we saw uh, game one. And we saw a Purdue team who would throw Zach Eady the ball and then the guards crash, kind of what Kyle and I both talked about. <clears throat> and I think it kind of showed this ability to stop this Purdue game. Like Zach Eady wasn't comfortable. I think they said uh, for the first 10 minutes of the second half, he didn't take a shot. He didn't score the final five minutes of the first half. So like they found something that was working that you couldn't hit shots. So um, I like this. The second Eady dribbles, guards crash um it's kind of why i bet the ed assist they just couldn't hit shots he probably had uh an expected assist rate of like six or seven like he had so many open looks uh but the thing is this isn't nc state anymore now you have clinging behind you you have guards that are probably more competent they can they can hedge down on the ball right as ed passes or dribbles and they can have people to fill the spot and help the helper um, something NC State couldn't do. So I took Klingon over half a steal. I think there's a lot of situations where uh, they just try to do this like soft lob that they do to Edie every single game. Um, and Klingon is long enough and athletic enough to get to it. And if not, there's going to be chances where the ball's on the floor, rolling around, scrappy, uh, and Donovan Klingon, longest arms in the uh, entire game other than Edie has the ability to grab that. So over half a steal plus 100 seems like a good price um, to lay here. So play number one is clinging just to get the one takeaway. You had the one Grant Nelson three in the Alabama game with UConn. So just says, I need one. I only need one. So that's an official play. We'll lock that in if you guys have it here on BetUS TV uh, because we're going to have to keep up with all of this. So Donovan clinging to get at least at least one steal in the game. All right, Kyle Hunter, do you have an official play as we go around the room here? Something that stands out to you off the side, the total of prop? 
I want to say first, I think that's a good play on the steals. Um, uh, Edie had five turnovers last game, and there was a couple others that could have been turnovers as well. Uh, when they started crashing on him, he wasn't sure what to do at first. And uh, I, I think that they're going to watch that tape and, and want to do something similar uh, because NC State's offense was their problem more than their defense in that game. Uh, so for me, uh, there's there's lots of things about this game, and I'm sure we'll all get to ch- chat a little bit. Uh, we just got one game to talk about. But um, the thing I want to look at is uh, Newton. Uh, and Newton is a really good player. I know that Klingon has gotten a lot of talk here, and he deserves to, but Newton was their best player throughout the course of the season for UConn. Uh, Newton has 7.86 assists per game in his last seven contests. He's easily been the best player and the most consistent player through the year. We know sometimes the shot's not great, but he's always a good passer. Uh, Purdue gives up more than 14 assists per game, which is bottom 100 in the country. They're 281st in assists per field goal made. Uh, I think UConn moves the ball really well. They run some really advanced offenses. Uh, Newton's an elite passer. I'm going to take Newton over five and a half assists here as my favorite play for tonight. Uh, I think Newton will have some good looks uh, himself, but I think that he's going to try to get other people involved more often than not. And uh, this Purdue team is at least susceptible when you pass the ball around like they, they will here. All right, and again, Tristan Newton, nine assists in the semifinal game, as you made reference to, with Alabama. Excellent defender as well. I mean, they've got numerous components on this UConn team, obviously. So there's a second official play. Jeff Nadeau, we come to you on this national title Monday edition uh, here. Give me a thought or two and and a handicapping play that stands out to you. Well, I think a player that could be very important to UConn in this game might be Samson Johnson. I mean, we have to remember, Klingon has only played more than 30 minutes three times this year in a game. He's really important, right? And he needs to be on the court. We know Edie can play a bunch of minutes. Um, And the game, the time where Klingon's out of the game, can Samson Johnson be a problem at all for Edie? I think Purdue can score. I think they're past offense here. They're going to get opportunities in the mid-range. Look, we have to remember, Braden Smith was horrific on Saturday. He was horrible. Um, He has to play better today. Their kind of supporting cast has to make shots, as Corby alluded to. You know, NC State didn't make shots. Purdue didn't exactly make a bunch of shots either. They just had Edie, and and he did enough, and they were able to get an ugly win. But they're going to have opportunities in the mid-range with the drop coverage that UConn throw out there. Look, UConn could score against anybody. I think their guard play is just way better than what Purdue has. I think both these teams have passed offense. To me, it screamed first to 75 wins. I thought 145 is a little bit low. Uh, I like the over a bit here. Again, that might be a reason for everyone to go under because we know how I've been. But (laughs) I think both these teams have passed offense. But I think the real key could be Samson Johnson. Is he capable of giving them a good 10 to 15 minutes? Because Klingon, throw in the fact that Klingon has at times had foul trouble. I also will add a play here. I I, 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 I I saw this prop and I thought it was interesting. Klingon under 14 and a half. I'm going to play that here. I'm not going to tell you that Klingon won't have a good game. He's obviously very important, but he could be out of the game for a certain period of time. Throw in that against other decent teams with good bigs. He didn't play that well. He had some trouble at, at times against Kalkbrenner. Uh, and this is the best big you're going to face. Um, I just felt like he was around 12 points, something like that. I don't know that he's going to have one of those big-time, crazy big-time games. I'm going to go under 14 and a half as well with Donovan Klingon. The plays are flying everywhere. So for Jeff, again, he wants over the game total, and he wants Donovan Klingon's points to be under 14 and a half. And Klingon, again, had the hand injury. Didn't seem that it affected him a lot. I mean, he made a couple of shots. He made free throws with the hand, supposedly injured in the Friday practice. Uh, He was altering shots everywhere. He was amazing. Uh, Again, if you're just joining us, we're live on this final edition of the BetUS College Basketball uh, Season Show uh, for 2024 here, culminating with the Final Four National Championship game for UConn and Purdue. Plenty of Play still to come from the handicappers. You can obviously re-rack and see the beginning of the of the handicapping in the plays, and we'll even have them up on screen in a little bit. Some questions and answers coming. Again, Jeff had a live play uh, as well on uh, Donovan Klingon. The host will have a live button play coming up also here in a couple moments. Uh, Corby Craig, you've got another uh, play that you want to make about this title game, Huskies and Boilermakers. By the way, I saw in the live chat Jake going on and on at me, Kentucky's a better job, Kentucky's a better job. 
Uh, one program has five national title wins in this century, six if you count 1999. The other one has one. In the last six years. Right, but what does it have to do with Hurley now, though? But all, all I'm saying is, in the last six years, Kentucky's done nothing on the big stage. But again, you can't, you can't going for a third championship. DJ, there's tonight. no way on the planet you can say that Kentucky's Kentucky's the grail of college basketball. It's I can say right now, UConn's the better job, and I have facts to prove it. And it's and it's a massive job in the Northeast and in New England and with recruits. I can say it because there's facts. Behind I think he'd be gone if if they'd give him a blank check. But. There's a ten million dollar buyout for Danny Hurley, whatever it's worth. We're about to find out. Uh, Corby Craig, another official play on the title game tonight. Fire when ready. Yeah, uh, I think the second one I have on my list. Yeah, Stefan Castle over half a three. Uh, we saw this guy has kind of fallen into his own. Like he's a, a freshman who um, at the start of the year he had he missed some time with injury. Now we're seeing him get his own shots. He shot six threes last game versus Alabama, a team who uh, was trying to play five out, which is interesting, kind of why I took the Grant Nelson three prop. Uh, I knew they were going to play five out, but the fact that even being guarded like that, Castle still got six threes is interesting. I don't think Purdue really has the speed to guard him and Klingon, so it's it's take your shot at who, who you would like. Uh, Castle has drove basket for most of the year. We, we'd see games where he shot one or two threes, and now – Six, and then the last few games, he just looked more competent at the three-point line to get over half a three from a team who I think is going to let you beat you from the outside. We, we saw even UConn shot 25 threes in the last game. So they're not running away from the three-point shot. To, and I don't know if you've watched guards try to drive for Zach Eady. Um, most of them just get scared away. So I think he gets a lot more shots than Mark probably projects. Give me over half a three. I think it was minus 140 on Prod Builder. All right, so an interesting one on Edie, and again, uh, there'll be a lot of attention on him. Six straight games, including going back to the Fairleigh Dickinson game, six straight games in the tournament with 20 points or more, 10 rebounds or more. He had, what, 20 and 12 uh, the other hey, night. TJ. What a battle. Yeah, go ahead. So I wanted to put this out there. This is amazing. I actually had the over prop. It was his lowest scoring game on Saturday. The, the lowest scoring game he had since February. Zach Heedy. He only had 20 points. The over point total. Insane. Right it's, I'm such a mush. It's insane. Yeah. Fadu was going on that one. I'm sorry. But, yeah. uh, I mean, it's... NC State couldn't make a shot. If NC State, yeah. NC State had 14 points in the second half with three minutes to go, if they were scoring more, then I think Purdue would have gone inside to Edie more and scored more, but the game dragged down. Obviously, I'm not making excuses, and there weren't a lot of points needed I will because say, NC though, State he's... couldn't score. These guys made some great points, and I think the real concern for, for Purdue here is if they immediately, when he catches the ball, he's so slow with his movements that all you got to do is get a hand in there and kind of drive him off the ball a little bit. And, you know, it's it, it's it, 50 50 balls are going to be important here. I believe they, to your point, I believe they took it from him like five times on the exact point of him having it down low and they swatted yeah. it from him, or when he put it on the floor, they swatted it from him. Keep an eye on that. Good observation yeah. with UConn. Uh, Kyle Hunter, I don't know if you're going to have another official play. Another comment here on the discussion, weigh in on anything else as we go around the room about the game, et cetera. No, I've got lots of comments, that's for sure. Um, so I, I think seven points is quite a bit, guys. I mean, seven is a pretty big spread. I know UConn has played really well. I know UConn has won all their games by more points than this. I think it's fair to say that Purdue is the best team they've played. Purdue's the second best team in the country. And uh, I would definitely lean Purdue plus seven. I mean, my, I can't get my number as high as seven. So uh, I think pace here should be slow, but they're good efficiency-wise, both teams offensively. Um, I think it's key that Purdue is top five in the country at defending without fouling. They do a really good job in not fouling. Uh, UConn's number one in the country in near proximity defense. That shouldn't surprise anybody with Klingon in there, obviously. I do think that it's you know, highly likely that Purdue won't have some ridiculous game plan like Illinois had in that game where they just went straight at uh, Klingon even with their guards. Uh, I think Braden Smith is a huge key to this game. I mean, Jeff was talking about how Braden Smith had a terrible game last game. He really did. And Smith's going to play a ton of minutes. In fact, one I considered was a Braden Smith over, like points, rebounds, plus assists over, I think it was 22 and a half. I just wonder if he can be efficient enough. I think he'll take shots. I think he'll get plenty of assists. But uh, Braden Smith's been a turnover uh, machine here of late, too. So, you know, is he going to be able to take care of the basketball? He'll play a lot. Edie will play a lot. Uh, Purdue's turnovers kind of left NC State with a shot the other day. I mean, NC State was not playing well at all. Purdue kept turning the ball over. 
Um, if NC State could have made some shots, it would have been a lot closer game. But to me, uh, you know, I think Purdue might be underrated by some people because if you look at Purdue, analytically their ratings are better than a lot of the teams that have won the tournament in the last few seasons. It's just that UConn is so good. You know, this is like a dominant mega team that is better than teams that we've seen in a long time that, you know, it makes people kind of forget how good Purdue has been. Purdue is a very good team. Um, plus seven is my lean in this game, certainly. And um, I think that uh, Purdue at least stands a chance here in a game like this. Jeff, you already laid out there about the total. Any thought on the side real quick? Not that you may have officially play it here, but any yeah, thought on the side? Yeah, I mean, look, we all have talked about all year the chip that, that Purdue has. This is the ultimate chip on their shoulder, right? Again, not only did they lose last year, but they also have to realize they've read all the headlines. So, oh, UConn can't be beaten. They're this good. They're that good. I agree with Kyle. My first thought was plus seven. The, the only issue is I just don't really want to bet into UConn. I'm just sorry. I, I'm just not interested. I, I We've seen time and time again them just turn it on. I mean, they ended up winning that game the other night by 14. Um, 86 yep. 72. I mean, the game seemed like it was going to be decided by five, and then UConn just. I, I always keep going back to this analogy. They, they remind me of a horse that is really good, and, and, and until the far turn, he just screws around, and then the jockey kind of says, Okay, we're just better than everybody else. We'll turn the Jets on, kind of like Zenyatta used to do. Zenyatta was a, a horse, she, she always would screw around for the first you know, three three quarters of the, 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 the race and then turn the Jets on and just beat everybody at the end. It's kind of what UConn does. They screw around, uh, and then they just say, oh, okay, we're just better, and, and they turn it on and go on a 10-0 run and win by 15. Well, then again, they blast teams out of there like they did to Illinois in the regional final, and we saw it over and over again the, last the issue, tournament. This tournament. The, I mean, for, for example, the championship game a year ago, being in Houston, we thought, can San Diego State defend them, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They made, every, they made everything in the first half, made every three-point shot, and wiped it out. I'm not guaranteeing it, but don't be surprised if you see a similar thing tonight from Hurley's team. I think the problem, the, yeah. the, pro the problem that uh, Purdue has is the guard play. I, I just don't think it's as good as UConn's. Um, right. I think, you know, Caravan and, and Newton and, and Cass and all these guys, they're just so superior to what Lance Jones and, and Braden Smith are. All right, so along those lines, the host is going to live button play. The live button has actually been good to me. I, I got that record up close to 500, 6 and 2 with the last. Uh, eight live button plays on the on the lines of will Purdue score and hang in with UConn. I've had success with first half plays. I looked at the first half line on BetUS, which is UConn laying four. I'm not going to go with that. I looked at the overall total. I think UConn could have a good first half and push the overall total up. I'm going to play under Purdue 32 and a half points in the first half. They didn't shoot it. They hit They hit a couple of threes right away. They didn't shoot it particularly well the rest of the game the other night. Edie had points inside. I think UConn's defense, especially in the first half, will hold Purdue down, play under Purdue 32.5 points in the first half of the national title game tonight. Again, if you're joining us live here, we have a couple more official plays. We'll get to your Q&A. One game we're discussing, Connecticut and Purdue. Connecticut going for the back-to-back -back titles would only be the second time in this century that that's happened. Uh, how about uh, Danny Hurley trying to join Billy Donovan, Mike Krzyzewski, and John Wooden? Hello, with back-to-back -back titles, if they can get it. Uh, Corby Craig, give me another official play. You've got one more. If, if you love the handicapping, Corby is unholstered here and just going and going and going. Give me another play. Yeah, I think I'm going to have a live play, too. I'm trying to figure out. I'll, I'll, we'll wrap around and I'll tell you. I think I lost next. track 10 minutes ago, but give me another one. Go. Yeah, so uh, the third one being um, Zach Eady over one and a half assists. Uh, talked about the exact reason last show. Uh, same same reason. I think they, they crash the second he dribbles, he kicks out. Um, they have chances to hit threes. The issue here is it's minus 150. Um, if you want to mitigate some risk there, you can bet Edie over one and a half assists parlayed on Prop Builder with UConn Moneyline. And since it's like a inversely correlated thing, like if Edie has a lot of assists, then UConn should win less. Uh, you'll get a pretty good price, plus 129. But for the sake of the show, uh, doing Zach Edy over one and a half assists, minus 150. I just think uh, the only game plan that you can have is the second he dribbles crash. Um, and so give me his over one and a half assists. I think uh, if you wanted to be crazy and bet the, the four plus, like Kyle and I talked about on Friday, um, it's like plus 480. I think it's still probably fine. If they're going to win this game, he's going to have to have three or four assists. But um, I'm not going to try to hit lightning in a bottle twice. Interesting. 
Are you up to three plays and you may have another one? You're going to have four for the final four potentially yeah, here not, in this title I'm game? not going to. I'm not going to play the last one, but BetUS is offering a really good line on okay. Braden, Braden Smith points over. Uh, I'm not going to bet it, though. All right, you're not going to – Braden Smith points over. And what is that line for him? It's 12, Just, 12 and a half, minus 120 BetUS. Everyone else is like minus 150, basically. So it's a really good price if you have a BetUS account. Um, always good, but I, I'm not going to bet it for the show. All right, interesting. But you may have one more live play coming up in the Q&A. Shall we do a little Q&A? Guys, the savages, the peeps that have been with us, I see the live audience is growing. We'll sit here for a few minutes and take some live questions and answers uh, here on BetUS TV as we talk about this national title game just after 9 Eastern time, actually probably about 20 minutes after 9 Eastern time. Uh, well, okay, so we're looking at some of what we've locked in on already, and you see there just graphically on the screen, we'll do this on the best bets, what we've locked in on. You see Jeff's over the point total. Also, uh, Kyle is over Tristan Newton's assists. And again, for Corby, he's got uh, clinging it, getting at least one steal, and what else did you also have? Stefan Castle having at least one three and Edie at least two assists. So we'll keep track of all of that. Uh, you see, by the way, here that we've been with you since the first week in November. Five months. Really, this is the sixth month, but five full months of being here Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. This is it. This is the last show uh, for this college basketball season until we're back later this year, God willing, in November. Are we ready, guys? Some Q&A from the peeps one more time about these different games. Uh, we'll see what they have for us uh, here at the moment. Uh, Scott is watching. He says, uh, Jeff's already played the total. Scott says, uh, Kyle, what did you make this total in uh, in your numbers? What did you have this at? Yeah, 143 and a half is what I had this total at. I usually oh. uh, skew toward unders in uh, the bigger games like this. Interesting. Jeff, I yeah. heard you react. That's a little yeah, I, 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 you know, I get it. I mean, obviously the um, you skew towards unders because you hope, and, and he's right. You'd hope it's a close game, but I, I just think we've seen many times where UConn games just turn into not being that close. I, I think UConn probably flirts with eighty. I think we have to also go back and and remember. I mean, we went back to NC State just making shots. I mean, they had plenty of opportunities. UConn's the type of team that will make those shots. And like I said, I think Purdue has passed offense here as well. I think, you know, with the guards that they have, um, you know, they're, they're going to get into the mid-range and they're going to have some open opportunities. Can Braden Smith make them? I think that's where I like Cor Corby's thought with Braden Smith over. He's going to have plenty of shots tonight. Um, he just has to knock them down. It's, it's easier said than done. Could be a lot of free throws here too. I had it first to... Well, I think I think you could probably hit 80, you know, 80 to 71, something like that. I thought it was more like you know, Ken Palm has 147 where I was looking, but I get his sentiment with a uh, slower under game. Uh, Corby Craig, what did you make this number in your metrics for the total? Uh, 143 exactly but the issue is I kind of agree with Jeff and the fact that like this could turn into something that you don't expect I think in most cases it's that the only reason that I lean under um, two reasons first off Alabama UConn played 63 possessions um, these are that's an Alabama team who wants to play fast now the thing is at 63 possessions this game should play like 138 137 uh, but we know that's not going to happen they're going to be more efficient than that but the big thing the reason that my number is knocked down so much and i tweeted about this during the final four was uh these rims i don't know if y'all like had your volume all the way up they are as stiff as can be like uh uconn alabama shot pretty decent but i mean nc state uconn also didn't touch the net uh, as jeff talks about this is one of the most efficient teams we've ever watched like you don't really have to worry about the rim when you're when you're absolutely on fire uh, but like NC State could not get a bounce to save their life. They missed wide open layups. Like there was a lot of situations where um, the rim had an impact. Now they've had a few days of practice. Is it going to be the same situation? Probably not. But uh, it's the reason I laid low off of total in general. Yeah, they did have some time to work around. But I mean, I I talked about this on the Friday show. If you can shoot, Alabama came out and made eight of their first eleven three pointers. Uh, Purdue made three of their first four to begin the game. They shot poorer as the game went on. NC State is the one team that really had problems. First half and second half being able to make anything. Other than DJ Horn, nobody made anything and also, in that game. Go ahead. Remember, as far as pace is concerned, look, these two teams are very slow, but the thing that overrides pace a lot of the time, it, 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 well, it always is, is efficiency. These are two very efficient offensive teams, right? And look, I think we could all agree the weakest team in the, the, the Final Four was NC State. They couldn't make shots. They, you know, eventually those happen. But these two teams should make them. They're both very good, very efficient. 
couple more quick questions. Joe watching more on Zach Eady. He says 25 plus points is plus 108. Feels like Eady gets his win or lose. Uh, again, Jeff, I know you were playing the Eady point total in the semifinal. Any thoughts? Um, is there foul trouble would be another thing I would be worried about here with him going against Klingon, with them going right at him with the size they have. Is there foul trouble? I would be concerned with that on a, on a point prop for E. That's me saying that. Any thoughts, guys? I mean, Anybody? putting him under 25 is, I think, pretty pretty interesting. I, I, I thought that was a little low for him. I mean, he's – I think regardless of whether they win or not, he is going to have to be the, the bell cow of, of offense for them, and he always is. Klingon is not going to play more than 30 minutes. He never does and never will. Uh, I don't know that Samson Johnson can, can do much here. Who's going to get his? I think, again, no one's going to deny that. It's all about what does the rest of Purdue do? Um, yeah, I, I would have him in high 20s probably. Kyle, anything on that question about the 80-point total? You want to move on? I only just want to lean over on an 80-point total. It's just, I mean, he hasn't played anybody like Klingon. So it's kind of an unknown, you know, um, you can say they play big guys in the Big Ten. Nobody's like Klingon that he's played against. So um, I lean over, but not enough to take it. One thing also, as far as post, I saw this stat pretty interesting. I think the most post attempts that UConn seen in the game, as far as on defense, is 14. Uh, Purdue averages 18 uh, possessions uh, post-wise per game. So this is obviously going to be Klingon's toughest uh, assignment as well. Both both guys are going to have tough assignments. These are two of the best they're the two best bigs in the country, and we have to look back and say, for all the things we've seen, it was a rough Final Four for the most part, a great final game here. Yeah, we're looking forward uh, to seeing if it lives up to the billing with UConn going for the repeat. Purdue has never won a national title. They haven't been in the title game since any of us has been born. 1969, Purdue lost to UCLA at uh, Freedom Hall in Louisville. Lou Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's last game, at UCLA, three straight national titles. They beat Purdue in the title game, 1969. Purdue's not been back since. Uh, they're here tonight, and it will be crazy tonight. A couple more. M. Caesar says, what defense is Purdue going to play? How is Edie going to guard the three-point line with Klingon? Will Edie just let UConn fly to the hoop so he doesn't foul? M. Caesar's got tons of questions. Let's take the one about how is Edie going to guard the three-point line and pull out with Klingon? What's the best guess? Corby, thought on that? No, Klingon shot seven threes all year. Um, so if that's if that's how they beat them, that's how they win. Uh, the big thing is like Jeff, or I think Cal brings up the fact that Edie really hasn't played anybody like Klingon. I'm not sure which one he said, to be honest. I was looking through because I knew they played Indiana. And I think Ware is a pretty decent comparable to Klingon. Obviously much worse, but the size, more of like a stretch post. Like uh, Obviously they can both block, but I think it's an interesting spot. Zach Eady scored 19 points in that game. So I, I wonder, is he going to struggle versus someone with similar height? Um, now, is Klingon ever going to put himself in the position to get in foul trouble? I don't think so. So uh, Zach Eady probably just has a good, have a good chance to score. What, the, what kind of offense or defense are they going to run? Zach Eady is going to sit in the middle of the paint, um, and they will play man-to-man, -man, probably a box and one, basically. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a really stretched out 2-3, I would say. Um, Zach Eady just doesn't leave the paint. It's, it's a good strategy. I mean, if, you, if I had a 7-3, 3-10 guy, too, I would run 2-3 every single day uh, of the week. Kyle, any thought on Edie Klingon, the matchup? It was 1984. It's been a while since we've gotten a true big-time center, seven-foot or bigger against a big-time center with so much notoriety. That was Patrick Ewing, Akeem Olajuwon in Seattle, Georgetown defeating Houston. Here we are with Edie, everybody's player of the year, Klingon, a consensus top five NBA lottery pick, stud, thought, Kyle, on, on the defensive matchup as well. I think um, Edie will stay in the paint. I think if Klingon does try to shoot outside shots, that's exactly what Purdue would want. You know, they they want him to try to make those shots because Edie has done a great job of staying back, staying out of foul trouble all throughout the season. They're not going to change anything uh, for the big game. And he's a great defensive rebounder. I mean, how could you not be if you have his kind of size, obviously? But uh, the question is, does UConn make those first shots when some of the other teams have missed those first shots? Because you don't really get second shots against Purdue. Good stuff on that. A couple of more. Scott wants to know, do we know who the refs are? All right, so there is a report that's been out there. So what they do is they have a list of 12 officials, 
they then uh, select six of them to work three each, the two final four games. So now there's six more names that are still sitting there. There have been a couple of reports about the names that are out there uh, for it. Roger Ayers, Terry Oglesby, and uh, who was the other one that I think was also Jeffrey there? Anderson. Uh, uh, Jeff Anderson. So supposedly those are the three officials. The NCAA will confirm that a couple of hours before the game. Ayers has worked like over 15 Final Fours. I think Oglesby's worked like, worked like eight or ten uh, championship games. I'm talking about eight or ten championship games. So are there going to be quick whistles? That's what I'm sure the question implies. Is there going to be foul trouble for Edie or for Klingon because of that? Um, again, uh, we'll yeah, there you go. You see it on the screen, Anderson, Oglesby, and Ayers. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. Anything I got a else? question. Go ahead. I'm not the host, but I have a question for all of you guys. Sure. I was presented this question about 20 minutes ago when I was doing another show. Someone asked me, what would I be surprised by in this game? And I said Purdue winning. I, I would be surprised by that. We've just seen how dominant UConn has been all year. Um, but, you know, here's Purdue, a team that, as I said, has that chip on their shoulder. Um, as Kyle alluded to, I think seven's a bit high, but then again, it's, is it as far as how much UConn wins by, what would anyone, what would, would, would that be the surprise if UConn lose? Corby surprise. Yeah, probably. I, I, I've bet a few derivatives of like UConn win plus some prop. I think it's UConn's game to win. Uh, I do see like there, I mean, there's definitely situations where Purdue wins this game. Don't get me wrong. They're in the national championship and they're great. And they have an all time great college basketball player. On their team, um, but this UConn team is just—we've kind of talked about it a million times. They're not—they like they don't impress you, and then you blink twice and they win by 14. Like I think there are situations where if Purdue somehow can stay consistent through the course of 40 minutes, they win this game. The issue is I, I don't think their guards are good enough to do that. So uh, I agree. I, I think Purdue winning, but I will say just like uh, <laughs> I almost live bet this, and I, y'all would have laughed. I mean, it's the most degenerate bet you could take. But but that that case in point is like I don't think. UConn is impressive, except for the the longevity point. You can bet first the race to 10 points, Purdue plus 115. This is a Purdue team who has came out of the gates and had a very efficient offense to start. Plus 115 seems good. But yeah, I agree. Purdue to win would probably be my like just strange outlier of this uh, matchup. Kyle, I'll go ahead and interject on that point. I've had UConn in every bracket b- before this thing ever began three weeks ago. They're the best team. I believe they were going to repeat. I would be more surprised or stunned if they play poorly. That's I will couch it that way, how they play. Can right. Purdue win the game? If Purdue plays great, they can possibly win the game. I would be stunned if UConn plays poorly. I'll throw that out there. Kyle, anything to add to that? I think what would surprise me a lot is if Edie's in foul trouble in this game. He's been so good at staying <laughs> out of foul trouble. And it would surprise me a lot if, Purdue wins without Edie having a massive game. You know, I, I think if if uh, Lawyer, Jones, Smith, guys like that just uh, carry them to a victory, it'd be really surprising. We saw Kyle's comment there uh, on the bottom of the screen, Kyle, the viewer, saying the refs let them play. Well, it just depends. I mean, if you're getting hit on on shots, you want that call. They, uh, they tend to call these things, especially early, a little more loose, but as the second half's going along, if it's if the possessions are big, the moments are big, and you get hit, if you get body blocked, if you get hit on the arm, on the wrist, while trying to take a key shot, blow the whistle. Uh, we shall see. One, um, uh, yeah, anything one, else? One other player that, you know, we kind of throw out so many opinions on so many different players. Mason Gillis has had two or more threes in 10 of the last 12 games. He's been a very efficient shooter for them. He's a guy that seemingly benefits off of being wide open on one of those ED, you know, he's got the ball and he just looks out and finds somebody. He's a really good shooter. We have to remember Mason Gillis was 10th nationally in three point percentage. Um, you know what? What's his, what's his, uh, I got to, I'm going to get that. I'm adding that. Give, give me Mason Gillis. It think, is yeah, a wait. crazy price. Plus you have 134. another ad of Mason Gillis, and what is the prop again, just so our guys get it? Is it over one and a half threes, Corby? Yeah, plus 134. I was very surprised by that number. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that. I'm 10 of the last 12. I'm sure this will be one of the 12 where he doesn't, but uh, I'm playing it. It, it. One and a half, over one and a half. Over one and a half on the threes. Uh, Corby, you were also looking at most outstanding player. Are you going to live play something <laughs> there? 
No, I, I, I'm not live playing. Um, we, do, we don't do units, so I would prefer to stay away from two to one favorites in most cases. But uh, I do think if you think UConn's going to win, Donovan Klingian plus 175, most outstanding player, probably makes a lot of sense to just. I, I mean, there are, there are shots that somebody like Castle does when he had a good game last game. If he has a great game this game, um, you could tr- try to give it to him. But I think at the end of the day, it's Donovan Klingin's to, uh, to lose for sure. All right. Uh, anything else? Uh, Kyle Hunter, uh, we're, we're winding it down. Anything else in the live chat that strikes you? Anything else you want to throw out there? Uh, I was just going to piggyback what Jeff said there. I think Gillis over is a good play. Um, I think he probably plays more, too, than a guy like Kaufman Wren in a spot like this because he can stretch the floor. Uh, so I think it makes sense to for Gillis to get some of those wide-open shots. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we've had some great conversations here. I think this has been fun doing the, the quad box, too. One more time. One more time with feeling here uh, as we get the, uh, the final game of the season underway. Uh, and there's a lot of people that are keeping track of all the live plays. All right, I don't know what this is going to look like on the best bet sheet. Let's see, Here we go. Let's see what it does look like. This is what we have for tonight, including live button or ads. Uh, you see uh, Corby had the most with the Klingon over uh, on the steals, the Stefan Castle over on the threes, each to get one, and Zach Eady to get a couple of assists. So Jeff is taking the over game total, 145 and a half. He's also taking under Klingon's point total, and the ad again is Mason Gillis under over of uh, one and a half over one and a half threes. Correct? And we yep. don't see that there. Correct. correct. All right. Yep. Uh, Kyle is taking the over on the assist with Tristan Newton, five and a half, and I like Purdue to be held down to under thirty three points in the first half. Live button, good to the host. Six and two, the last eight live button plays. This will get me to five hundred if I'm there. If I'm there with that one tonight. All right, final thoughts, guys. National title, history on the line. History either way. They will talk about this game for the next decade or more because either UConn gets back-to-back titles, which has only happened two other times in the last 50 years. Bobby Hurley, Danny's older brother, part of the 91-92 back-to-backs. Now Danny Hurley trying to coach back-to-backs. Shashevsky, Billy Donovan, Danny Hurley, if they can get it. If not, if Purdue gets it, they've never won a national title. Only been in the title game one other time. Boiler up if they get this thing. Um, again, half of northern Indiana is going to be in Arizona, it seems like, for this game tonight. Final thoughts. Corby, we'll go around the room. Final thought. Yeah, somebody says uh, rumor is Jeff Nadeau to coach Kentucky. Uh, hopefully not. We need we need Jeff back here next year. And if he is at Kentucky, let's sign a contract real quick that we can still get him on the show on the right. off days. He's allowed practice is pretty days. easy in Kentucky, huh? Do they practice? Some would wonder how much they practice. Kyle Hunter, final thought. I mean, uh, just shout out to everybody. Uh, thanks to the chat, everybody who's tuned in all season. Uh, you guys make this show a lot of fun. And uh, TJ, Corby, Jeff, Matt, all you guys, it's a privilege to do the show with you guys. And everybody at BetUS behind the scenes, you guys do a great job and make it a lot easier for us. So, uh, fun season. Amen. Jeff Nadu, anything yeah. else? Well, Matt. I think when we started the show in, when was it, November, we, we had mm-hmm. like 4,000 subs. Uh, and you know, we're up over 10,000. I, I think it's been really impressive. We may have been less. I don't know. We did really well. And I'm sorry it was a rough season for me. I hope I'm back next year and I could get a revival. I do think we... I would have loved to have had a show tomorrow because I would already make a pick for next year to win the whole thing. But do it, no, do it no. right now. Make it? the pick right Who now. No it? time like the present. Make it. Uh, USC. I'm looking at USC. I, I think that's going to be a very good. I think Musselman is going to get Musselman. Yeah, I think he's going to get whoever get your he wants. USC plus 500 futures while you can. And remember, uh, they're going to the Big Ten. I mean, that's going to be a major shakeup. It's going to be very interesting. But, yeah, I, I think we all hope for next year. It'll be fun. Uh, hopefully we're all back. And, uh, yeah, we can keep this going. So thanks, everybody, for watching. There you go. Watch Scott Drew, by the way, for Kentucky. He's got a couple of massive recruits that could come with him. That is somebody that's on the radar. That's the buzz out here in Arizona. We shall see. Uh, my thanks to the handicappers all year long, Corby, Kyle, Jeff, uh, Matt Cox, who was not able to be with us today. We were going to try the quintet, uh, but Matt Cox is traveling today. And he did the best out of all of us, and he's not here on the <laughs> National Championship Show. Shout out Matty Cox, and go check out his Three Man Weave podcast uh, as well on that. My thanks to Natalie, Danny, everybody believing in this. 
uh, Kevin has put up with us for the entire year, for five months. Bravo, Kevin, uh, as well as Antonio and Ali helping out here and there. Everybody behind the scenes, Francisco, Just also- Bruno. Everybody behind one other thing. Yeah. Just because this show is over, support everyone on this show that, that sure. has something. Kyle, and all of all of us are handicappers. I'm not even saying me. I, you know, uh, support everybody for what they're doing. Three Man Weave and what TJ does. TJ does a go. boxing show. Go support that. Go. These guys are on MLB. Kyle will eventually do his college football college stuff. Football. Sure. Um, you know, I have the sit down. So everybody has all sorts of things. Go, um, go, go support everybody. Lock in on the social media to keep up with all of that. And the bet us shows aren't stopping, whether it's the MLB show, it's the world sport football, the NBA show headed to the playoffs, et cetera. We'll be back before you know it, talking college basketball. It has been a journey. We've loved it. We've been thrilled. And somebody makes history tonight with UConn and Purdue. For now, we gave you a ton on the national championship game. Enjoy. And goodbye for now. We're back sooner than you think on BetUS TV. Thanks for joining in. Don't forget to like our video. If you don't want to miss our next show, make sure to ring our bell and subscribe. For all our sports content, head to BetUSTV.com. See you next time.